cut that shit off. It's Christmas. Fuck no. It's over. Christmas is over, you guys. That's done. In the bag. Today is December 26th. Maybe you're listening to this and it's December 27th or 28th or maybe even the 29th or maybe even the 30th when you're listening to this. But you know what all those dates mean? Those dates mean New Year's resolution time, not January 1st, okay? It's the day after Christmas through the rest of the year. That's when you need to start getting your shit together, okay? But listen, the holidays are over. It's time to get back to work. It's time to start, you know, shaking it on the corner, whatever you do for a living, all right? I don't judge, but uh, the point is it's time to get back out there, all right? You had your time with your family. You had your time to recover, and now it's time to get back to the hustle, you know? Because while you were taking a day off, somebody else was passing you by, all right? But... Before we get into it, uh, we're going to have a great episode today. Um, I am doing a solo podcast today. There's no guest. There's no co-host. There's no me playing stand-up comedy tracks for you, okay? That's only once a month, so you got to wait till next month or go back and listen to old ones. But it's just me. It's just me today. Um, every now and then, I'll do a solo podcast, and um, it's usually because I don't have a guest or a co-host available, and mostly it's because I have something that I want to talk about. And uh, today's one of those days. I got something that I want to talk about with you guys. So that's what we're going to do right now. Um, <clears throat> before we get started, there's only a couple things that are that are sponsoring this particular episode today. And that would be, most importantly, I need you guys who are in the Vancouver, British Columbia area. I'm coming to your town uh, January 2nd through January 5th. I'll be at... Uh, Rick Bronson's brand new comedy club over there. Rick Bronson has a chain of comedy clubs, uh, a few in Canada, a few in the United States, and I love working that club. And uh, normally it's called House of Comedy um, or uh, <clears throat> or Comic Strip, but listen, it's the brand new comedy club in Vancouver. I'm excited. I'm there on the very first opening week, and uh, I'm there with Jimmy Schubert. And when him and I team up for a two man show, it's it's it, it's it's phenomenal, okay? And I hope to see you guys out there. And if you're, you know, if you're in that area or if you're in Seattle or, or up uh, up in Canada on that side, it would be great to meet some of the podcast listeners. So go to homeschooledpod.com and click on tour and all of the dates will be there. You can click on whichever show you want to go to on there uh, the Thursday through Sunday and uh, whichever one you can make, click on it. You can get tickets right on my website, okay? Homeschooledpod.com. <clears throat> the other thing that's sponsoring this episode is also homeschooledpod.com, but this time click on merch. I want to let you guys know that, you know, the holidays are over and uh, between <clears throat> between now and New Year's Day, between now and New Year's Day, January 1st, I'm going to do a 50% off promo code. Okay, you guys, 50% off. Use promo code NYD for New Year's Day. NYD to get 50% off. So go to homeschooledpod.com. Click on merch and you'll see the t shirts, the hoodies, the sweatshirts. I got yoga pants for the ladies. I've got. Uh, tank tops for the guys and the girls i got stickers i got mugs it's all on there okay homeschooledpod.com right now there's only one logo that you can get on all of those things and it's the x president's series and if you don't know what that is you need to go and check it out it's a badass logo that my co-host kevin Lyons designed and um what i'm gonna do is uh all of our logos are going to be based or themed around like some of our favorite movies. So the ex president series is obviously a point break reference. So you, you, if you want to see me and Kevin on the cover of our homeschooled podcast, uh, merch, wearing uh, some ex presidents masks, it just looks badass. It's a great t-shirt. Kevin did a great job and, uh, they're limited. Okay. Because they're only going to be available until I hit episode 300 episode 300 is going to be a brand new design out there. So you guys have got to go now and get this one, and that's how we'll know you're an OG. You got the very first design of Homeschool Podcast. And right now, today, from now until January 1st, go to homeschoolpod.com. Click on merch. Go shopping. At the checkout, use promo code NYD for New Year's Day. All right, you guys? Counting on you. And that's all. That's all I wanted to tell you about today, okay? So mostly everything's done at the Homeschool Podcast, homeschoolpod.com. Get tickets. Get merch. 
and I look forward to it, and I hope that you guys are helping me out. And uh, right now, I'm going to have a, a very important episode for you, just me and you, one-on-one, solo. No guest, no co-host. It's just me, Augustino Zoida, homeschooled podcast. Here we go. Please take your seats. School is now in session. Homeschool podcast. Homeschool the homeschool podcast why because he was homeschooled i don't want to do that (laughs) okay i don't want to do that at all all right you guys all jokes aside um i hope you had a great holiday i do always get on everybody and i say stuff like uh you know holidays are over time to get back out there and go to work and i mean it and it's more not me barking at you as much as it's me barking at me and i have to believe that you know myself i say it out loud because it's for me to hear and um but honestly i hope you guys did have a wonderful holiday if you were with family or with friends i hope that you made the best of it life is too short not that people aren't going to be around forever i hope that you guys made some memories and if you were alone I hope that you took advantage of every opportunity that you have with yourself to to have a wonderful, enjoyable uh, evening or day or two days, whatever. I hope hope that you made the best of it and you looked on the brighter side of everything. And um, now we're back. Now we're back, you guys. Let me get ready here to uh, set up for our closing song before I put my my, uh, notes down. Uh, All right, cool. So... um, just a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Just a couple of short episodes here. You know, it's a holiday week. Earlier this week, I only did like, you know, an under 40-minute episode, which is pretty short for us. And this one's not going to be very long either. But uh, one thing that uh, we got to talk about because it's coming up, okay? New Year's Day is coming up. And it's a time of resolutions. That's what they say. I don't agree with the concept of New Year's Day resolutions. Um, I don't partake in them. I don't agree with them. I think that New Year's resolutions are the same thing as saying I'm starting a diet. And we all know what happens with that. You cannot start a diet. A diet is temporary. Okay? You've heard this a thousand times. People say it's a lifestyle change. That's what you have to do. It's a lifestyle change, not a diet. Diets don't work. You can do a diet and it might work for a little while, but then eventually you're gonna it's it, it's temporary. It's gonna stop. So you're going to eventually start to do those bad things again, or start to indulge again, or start to eat those things that you stopped eating. You cannot do a diet. Diet is temporary. All right, um, <clears throat> and that's how I feel about resolutions. You know, resolutions are famous for being on New Year's Day. Everyone says starting January 1st, I'm going to start my year off right. And that's the same thing as doing a diet. Uh, It's a temporary solution. You just have this goal to hit for New Year's Day and you said, I'm not going to start till New Year's Day. And you're setting yourself up for failure because you're going to start something and you're not going to stick with it. Okay? It's just an unrealistic goal. I was talking to somebody last night and uh, just a friend of mine I ran into And he was talking about, uh, he was thinking about, you know, not drinking next year. And of course we, we were in a bar when I ran into him, but he said that, you know, he's got to cut back on drinking and that's his news resolution that he's not going to drink anymore on January 1st. And I just told him, I was like, dude, you got to give yourself realistic goals because you can't just say, I'm going to stop drinking. You're, you're already setting yourself up for failure. Now I said that twice already, setting yourself up for failure. Why am I saying that? Why is it setting yourself up for failure? And here's what I think. <clears throat> you can't give yourself a start date like I'm going to start my diet Monday or I'm going to start uh, you know, eating right and working out as my New Year's resolution starting January 1st um, because then you're telling yourself that you can do all of the bad things until that time. So if you're already planning on eating poorly, not working out and everything until that day. You're just going to go, well, these are my last few days to enjoy myself. That's what you're telling yourself. These are my last few days to enjoy myself because New Year's Day, I'm starting a new thing. So right now, I'm going to do that thing all the time because I'm not going to get to do it again for a very long time. You're already telling yourself that you need that thing that you're giving up, that you love that thing that you're giving up, and it's really hard to give up. You're telling yourself that because you're giving yourself a day to start and until then, you're going to just do it. You can't do that, okay? That's already setting yourself up for failure. It shows a sign of weakness. And so what am I telling you that 
I'm better than you, that like uh, I'm so strong I can st- stop cold turkey just like that. That's not what I'm saying either. I'm saying that you can't let these stigmas of New Year's resolutions bother you because you're going to set a New Year's resolution and just like a diet, it's temporary. It's going to end. It'll end by maybe the end of January. Hey, some people, they make it all the way to the summer. Some people don't make it that far, maybe March. But any time that you're so hooked on something and you're so in the habit of doing something and then you just stop one day, I mean, you're going to keep doing it. And here's an example. And again, I'm not trying to say like I'm better than anybody or anything like that because I did it the wrong way way many, many, many times. You'll you'll do things the wrong way thousands and thousands of times, but you'll do it the right way once because once you figure out it's the right way, then you found your way. And it's difficult because you want to tell people how you did it and how you figured it out. You figured out the right way. And it's hard for you to see people, especially when you care about them, do things the wrong way because you know that you do, that you did it that way. And then you want to tell them, hey, do it like this. But you know that they're not going to listen. First of all, you don't want to come across as being that preachy person and everyone like a know-it-all. And then also, you know they're not going to listen because you've been in their position and someone was telling you the right way and you didn't listen. You were just doing it the wrong way over and over and over again. Okay, so here's the example I'm about to give you. I have, uh, I stopped eating meat it's been eight months now okay just about actually i think i think like first week in january will be eight months for me i'm not saying that um i'm better than you because i don't eat meat please don't take this the wrong way that's not what this is about okay um i'm just saying it's something that i wanted to stop doing and i thought i was never going to be able to stop doing it and i tried a couple times to just stop cold turkey like you know what january 1st or monday i'm gonna stop eating meat and um those are just temporary you know you're you're gonna fall off the wagon so to speak so how have i successfully had no meat for the for eight months and i'll tell you and this is something that i hope that i can and you can apply to other things that you want to change about your life going forward okay um so how did i make it those eight months keep in mind i loved me love i was a dude i was a burger dude i was a you know i'm italian okay i i was a uh you know meatball sausage and peppers like you try telling an italian that he can't have meat no more i didn't think in a billion years i would be able to do this okay and uh right now eight months in i'm not even really missing it how is that possible i i mean i'm a big like i love meat and sandwiches like a big pastrami guy you know i'll get a pastrami uh, you know lasagna with the meat sauce like how in the hell am i doing this eight months i mean even if it was five or six months i'm I'm still like amazed i can't believe i've hung in there this long it feels like forever and i don't miss it how did that happen i'll tell you guys how it happened here's how i did it we're not doing the temporary thing we're not doing the resolution we're not doing the diet it's not a temporary thing we're doing lifestyle change okay because before i did it i wanted to do it so for me to say to myself there's no way i'm ever going to be able to give up meat that must have meant at one point i wanted to i just didn't think i could do it so when i first started wanting to not or wishing that i could be strong enough to not do it anymore i was doubting myself that i could ever do it but i just wanted to so um Here's what I personally have found to work for me. I just did it in little pieces. I just did it a little bit at a time. Um, I didn't go like January 1st, I'm going to stop eating meat. Okay, that's not how it happened for me. How it happened for me was I would just stop for a little while. You like ease into it instead of the cold turkey. I'm like easing into it. I'll go this week i'm not going to have any meat or you go this week i'm going to have meat once this week so i'm going to pick like a good one like you know maybe i'll save it for the weekend and i'll have like a nice steak or whatever it is or a nice burger or whatever you enjoy um and that's what i would do and then and then time would go on and i would go eventually just be like you know what i'm only going to have 
red meat once a month and then the rest of the time i'm going to be doing like fish and chicken and turkey and for a while there i was having i got all the way to the point of having red meat every couple of months and just doing chicken and turkey and telling myself well those are really lean meats they are a lot healthier which they are um and then i got to a point where when i was doing red meat i was doing like organic grass-fed even bison you know just telling myself it's healthier which i'm sure it is healthier than just the average like you know cheap meat that you could get um so but it was i was just like little by little improving and then eventually i would do i don't want to do any meat at all because i i came up with this because i've I've done it with other things like i know that um bread is a big one for me i love bread and that's one thing that i i should give up like i lost like so much weight and kept it off when i was having long increments of, of avoiding bread and it's just little promises that you make to yourself. You just go, you know, for the next 30 days, I'm not going to have bread. And I went out to dinner and I enjoyed myself and I had delicious meals. And I even went to a couple of restaurants where they bring you fresh bread that you smell it and it just smells amazing. You could tell it was baked there. And, the, and people are like, well, have some bread with, you know, and I just, and I, I behave myself. When you make a promise to yourself, you have to keep it, okay? This is not a diet. This is not a resolution. This is a lifestyle change. I don't want this anymore. That's what this is about. Like you just have to make promises to yourself. And then I did the same thing with beer. Beer is another one. I still struggle with it. I still drink beer, but I I do take breaks. I'm not on a beer break right now because of the holidays. I wasn't even going to lie to myself. I like to drink beer, okay? But it's very heavy. It's very fattening. I know it's what keeps the gut there. But there have been times that I'll go, you know, I'm not going to have beer this month. In the beginning, it was, I'm only going to have beer once a week, and I saved it for Sunday to watch football. And then I went on other times where there was, uh, you know, just months without it. And then I'd be like, well, hey, I made it the 30 days. I did it once with sugar, you know, to uh, for moral support for a friend of mine who has diabetes. Out of, he's my age, out of nowhere. He got it. And I decided for moral support, I was going to, you know, 30 days, no sugar. And I, I meant no drinking, no beer, um, I couldn't even have like a tomato sauce if it had sugar, like added sugar in it. So I completed that for 30 days. I did it strong. And at the end of it, I rewarded myself with with a beer. So that's what a a lot of the key to this is, is giving yourself little goals and achieving them and then giving yourself a small reward. I'm going to not have meat for a month and I'm going to... Or I'm going to exercise, you know, five days a week for a month and make sure I don't miss any. Um, But for me, it was meat. So I would just tell myself at the end. And then at the end, I would go, well, what meat am I going to have now? Like, you know, I I waited a whole month. It better be something good. And I did this so often that, you know, I would do a month without meat and then reward myself. A month without meat and reward myself. That I realized that every time I was having my once a month meat, it wasn't even that good. Like, it wasn't even that worth it. There's no place that we, where I'm going out where I'm just like, you know, these people are making it so good. It, it, it's, it wasn't anything to die over. I was I was actually really enjoying and having delicious meals with, with, with veggies and fish and stuff like that. Like, I was, uh, you know, you go out, you get a buffalo cauliflower. I mean, um, but you can have really, like, amazing things. I go out and I'll do seafood. Seafood's the best. Um, you know, I'm going out and having French fries. I'm dipping them in, in aiolis. I'm having buffalo cauliflower and blue cheese. Like this doesn't sound like a diet, but it's it's delicious and it's a, it's it's just a lot healthier for you. You know. Um, now, if you're someone out there who <clears throat> is needs to lose a lot of weight, I was one of those guys once too. I was like 240, almost 250 pounds, and I'm only like five nine and a half. Um, right now, I'm like 180. So that's just to tell you how much weight I have lost. So I was one of those dudes that needed to lose a lot of weight. So <clears throat> there's gonna it's gonna be more than one thing at that point. It's gonna be multiple things that you have to give up. Um, and I would just switch it up. I'd be like, this month no meat, this month no sugar, this month no this that, you know. And then eventually I combine or I would do no week, a one week. No, that's what I would do. One week no this, one week no that. And then at the uh, fourth or fifth week, I would combine all of them into one week. I can't do all of them. So that's how you ease into something and you just get used to it. And by the time I wasn't even doing them anymore, I didn't even want them anymore. So if you're, if you have a lot of weight to lose stuff, you're going to lose it quick. I can tell you, yes, you need to exercise, 
trust me, I don't like exercising either. You know, I got to work out. I got to lift weights. People tell me that. I, I know. I just, I just don't like it. But at least walk. Like, it, it just at least walk. Um, and this is, this is not, this episode is not about dieting. It's not about losing weight. Um, it's just about, like, resolutions or things that you want to change in your life. And I'm just using that as an example because it's a common one. And I did it with the meat. But um, <clears throat> just walk a lot. If you're going to do any exercise, do that. And, you know, you can do it a different place every time and check out new sceneries. And I mean, even if, you, even if you go to a museum, if you got one of those counter apps in your phone that counts your steps, I mean, just go do something fun one day on the weekend. I'm sure you guys are doing stuff. You're going to, you know, check out a place here and there. Maybe you go to a museum. There's tons of stuff that people do on the weekends that you don't even realize how much you're walking. You look at your little step counter and you're like, holy shit, I walk like you know, six miles more than I normally do today on the weekends when you're out doing stuff, um, which is which is great. Um, but just walk. If you don't like working out like I do, just at least do that. Okay, so let's say you're a person who has a lot of weight to lose. Um, you're going to lose it quick. And these are like the key things that uh, out of shape or overweight people consume. And as soon as you stop them, as soon as you stop these things, like that's going to be the biggest chunk of your life that you're going to notice the quickest results. And then when you're going to get down to like a certain size, then you can start like working out. You'll, you'll, you'll see it. And uh, and then you'll realize how, how easy it is. And then you you can even enjoy things that you like still because like, you know, you've lost all of that weight. You know, once you quit all of these really, really bad things, you tell yourself, I'm going to stop eating these things for 30 or 60 days. You're going to see the results so quick because those things are like so harmful and you've been consuming them that as soon as they stop your body's gonna be like shocked I'm telling you guys so <clears throat> excuse me i got like a little stuffy nose here but you're gonna just notice it like like so quick and then once you get down to you know you drop that big chunk that big first heavy hump to get over you're gonna be like well i can still enjoy the things i want to enjoy i went my 60 days so now let me go and have this thing that I haven't had in like a month. You just can't indulge. You just have it once. And then you go, um, and then I'm going to continue next month without it again. So, um, and here are those things, by the way. Here are those big ones. I think meat, like I personally stopped eating meat for dietary purposes. So that's why I, I did these increments and that's how I found what worked with me. Um, but but then uh, I eventually started doing it for like uh, the sake of the animal. Uh, I just don't agree with the way that they're kept or, or or killed or, you know, I don't agree with consuming the depression that they have, which is what they're born for is to sit there and do nothing and just be wait to be murdered. And uh, it's got to be a depression and horror and you're eating it can't be healthy for your own uplifting spirit. I don't know. It's not scientific. I just believe that. Um, so it started as diet, then got to like because of the animal and, and um I still eat fish, so I have protein. I don't know if I can ever give up fish. That's going to be a tough one. But then again, I said that about meat too, so you never know. One day I might start to do that. Like, hey, no fish this week. You never know. I might, I might try it. But that's a big one, you guys. Um, meat. And I know you're thinking, well, I don't eat red meat that often. I, I, I switched to chicken and turkey because it's leaner. But listen, these are the big things that if you stop, you're going to see the results so fast because what we're – the average person is consuming is just like really shitty quality meat well i buy the organic i buy the grass-fed listen you guys it's a bunch of bullshit you're buying into something that's written on a label it's easy for them to lie i mean there'd be no way of knowing that these cows over here and these cows over here were were you know killed cut up and put into these packaging like we have no way of knowing that i mean grass-fed is a loophole for them to put on a packaging yeah they were grass-fed but what else did you put them in did you shoot them up with a steroid were you giving them hormones um which all goes into your body makes you blow up and <clears throat> what else were they doing were they still kept in tiny areas on top of each other because there's such a high demand for meat that they all are you know just you know, with elbow room barely in, in a place, which means that they're all like shitting on each other and eating each other's shit. That's a type of, th there's no way that you can control the quality of meat that you're eating. You have no idea. Okay. So just give it a, a try. I'm not saying like, stop. Not, by the way, I'm not saying to do fucking anything. You guys ain't got to do anything. I fucking say, I'm just telling you what worked for me, but I'm not going to tell you what worked for me and then not tell you what it was. So stop the meat, 
Stop the sugar. I mean everything. I mean, look at the get in the habit of looking at the sugar content and stuff. It's really interesting because then you'll start to compare everything and you'll be like, holy shit, this cranberry juice, glass of cranberry juice has got more sugar than like this, you know, piece of pie I had last night. It's really fascinating. But just be in the habit of checking sugar on stuff. Sugar is like, sugar turns the fat in your body. It's like the enemy. If you stop eating meat and sugar alone, boom, for a month, it's going to, it's going to melt off you. It's going to melt off you. That because there's so much of that crap and in, in stuff and you don't even know it. So that's one sugar, meat. You know you guys got to stop having soda. <clears throat> don't have like you know all this kombucha or fucking juices and stuff. You know there's so much sugar in that man. I mean, I like to drink. You, uh, you know, I still drink beer like I said, but there's a lot of sugar in there. There's a lot of carbs in there. You gotta cut that out. You know, I still do it, but then again. I stopped eating so much stuff and lost so much weight that like I can afford to have a beer. I don't have it every day. I can afford to have a beer when I go out socially with people and or you know after a long day on a weekend I sit back and and I have one if I'm in the mood like that's what I'm saying. I can afford to do that. That's the problem with diets. It's temporary. But you're setting yourself up for failure. I'm telling you give yourself this promise to yourself that you're going to stop doing this certain thing for this amount of time. And then once you get down to a reasonable goal for yourself, you can start to do those things again. I'm not saying never again. If you tell yourself never again, that's why I don't like these resolutions. Never again am I going to I'm going to stop doing this on January 1st. What are you talking about? Just stop doing it for a little while until you get a hold of the situation. And then you can continue it because you like it moderately every now and then. So you guys got to watch out. But distilled alcohol, uh, no sugar, no added sugar. So you guys can have you know tequila, whiskey, vodka. Just be careful what you're mixing it with. Um, I do a lot of water. Or I just do it, drink it straight. Be care. I mean, or if you're gonna do like margaritas and stuff, like just make it at home with the, with limes and lemon. Or sometimes you know. Nowadays, a lot of bars will do that for you. They make the skinny version, they call it. But just be careful what you're mixing with. Everything has sugar. So just stop the sugar. Stop the meat. Stop processed foods. Uh, I know this is a big one. This is a tough one to tell people, especially if you got kids and stuff. Like, um, But fucking just throw your microwave away, man. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that. That could be a little extreme, but I haven't had a microwave in probably like three or maybe three or almost four years. I haven't even had a microwave. Get yourself a toaster oven. And what it does is, and it's a little extreme, so you don't have to do it. And, you know, maybe you don't live alone. Maybe you got a couple kids. Well, I got to keep the microwave for the kids. Or it's just super inconvenient when you got to reheat something. But when you ha- when you don't have a microwave, you're not buying frozen stuff. You're not buying stuff in a box or in a bag that you can just throw in the microwave, you know, real quick when you have, don't, don't have time to eat. Because that stuff's all processed. Stuff's all bad for you. You know, buy fresh. Don't buy cans of stuff. Buy the fresh, you know, green beans and and make them. It's not hard, you know. The real potatoes and make mashed potatoes. It's so easy. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, I'm not trying to just like harp on dieting stuff. It's just it's it's easy to make those little changes, and and the microwave will allow you allows you to do process stuff a lot. I know it's a pain in the ass to reheat stuff, but it just takes all the nutrients out. Toaster oven is the shit. I love the toaster oven because the toaster oven. Um, you can reheat stuff and it just, it makes things better to be honest with you. Uh, besides reheating, I cook stuff in the toaster oven. It's so fast and easy too. not fast microwave fast and not like two minutes fast, but it's, it's, uh, you know, 20 minutes, you pop it in there and the bell goes off. You got, I cook salmon in there. It comes up perfectly. You guys, you guys ever get like tater tots from the frozen section? I make those for breakfast sometimes. You make tater tots, you throw them in the microwave. They're fucking terrible. They're all soggy and shit. You got to put them in the oven. That's how they get all crispy. The the toaster oven does it. 20 minutes, boom. You broil it in there. All, all, all hard and crispy and golden. I put some buffalo sauce on there. I'm enjoying myself, you guys. I'm enjoying it. And I haven't had meat in eight months. But like I said, I want to rant on, rant on, rant on about diets. It's not. It's just I'm using an example. I, I did it, okay? I got through it. This is about resolutions and i hope that you can apply this towards whatever it is that your resolution is going to be fine you made your news resolution and starting january 1st but fine give yourself these short realistic achievable goals little by little you can 
increase them to further, longer, more difficult, okay? Um, January 1st, if you already have your New Year's resolution, what I'm saying to you is right now, December 6th through 30th, or 31st, <clears throat> fuck 31st, because you're going to get fucked up that day anyway, you're going to be on Taco Bell on the drive through home, don't worry about it. So the 26th through the 30th, I would just say like, already begin your training for January 1st. That's where people get fucked up with their resolution. That's where people get messed up with their resolution. Is waiting until January 1st. And then they start. But right until the day. They were they were going hard. So January 26th through the 30th. is Should be your training. Time. You're, you're in training mode. Getting ready. For the fight on January 1st. You should already be getting in the habit. Okay, from that time to that time, while well, the holidays are over, I'm going to start taking it easy on on the, the sweets or the drinking. You know, I drink all, all holidays, so I'm going to take a break from the 26th to the 30th because I know I'm going to drink on the 31st with my friends. I'm not going to miss that. But that's a compromise with yourself. That's a promise to yourself. And that's training. And that's realistic. Don't be unrealistic. Don't give yourself goals that you that are, that, that are going to set you up for failure. If your New Year's resolution is, I don't want to drink starting January 1st, that doesn't mean you drink until now, until then. Be in training. At least tell yourself, I'm not going to drink until 8 p.m. Or when you go out to a bar, tell yourself, I'm not going to order a drink until I've had two waters first. You're going to thank me for that. Because you're going to have the cheapest bill out of everybody at the bar. Because you're going to be full of water and not really feeling thirsty or hungry by the time you order that first drink. It's going to be maybe your only one. And uh, it's just training for your resolution that you made. So um, I that's my, su- my suggestion to whatever it is that your New Year's resolution is. Right now is training time for that thing. Do not set yourself up for failure and give yourself a reachable goal. I'm going to stop doing this thing for 30 days. January 1st till you know february 1st 30 days stop doing it and then when february 1st comes along go ahead and uh reward yourself if you feel like it if you feel like hey i want to do a little you know do it um i mean again this is not going to apply i mean if your resolution is i want to stop fucking shooting heroin i'm sorry you guys this may not work for you well uh, i did it without 30 days and then i shot up again and just you know we're talking about two different things here um but whatever the resolution is, maybe it's I'm going to start getting out there and pursuing my career or my dreams more starting January 1st. Don't set yourself up for failure. Right now, be in training for it. Get ready. Get your plan ready. Get ready to start those emails. Get ready with the headshots. Whatever it is, just get – this is training. Take your party party time on, on the 31st. January 1st, you've already trained all week. You got this. You know? You're know, recuperating from the drinking. You're ready, you're ready to start your year. You got this. So my point is, I don't believe in resolutions. I believe they set you up for failure. I believe that they are like diets, which are temporary. And not lifestyle changes. Lifestyle changes are hard to make. You cannot make a lifestyle change overnight. January 1st, lifestyle change. That's the diet. That's a temporary. Lifestyle changes take practice. They take training like a boxer trains for a big fight. You have to go a week without it and then see if you can do two and then see if you can do three. Just like lifting weights. Now add 100 pounds. Now you know. Now do add 50 pounds. You're just going to keep growing that muscle little by little in training. That's what works. That's why I don't believe in the resolution you want to start your resolution january 1st that's fine get ready for it start training for it give yourself a time to do it january 1st through february 1st last that long if you feel like uh you know hey i made it that 30 days now let me go ahead and have one night of enjoyment if you feel like it if you feel like that you need it go ahead but tell yourself before you have that drink before you do that thing before you take that break tell yourself 
I did my 30 days, right after I enjoy this one, I'm going to go another 30. You make little promises with yourself, you guys. And again, this is not a barking orders. This is not a I'm better than you, you should do what I did type thing. I, uh, I tell myself this all the time. And if I can help somebody, because I've, I've, like I said, I've done it a thousand times the wrong way. And I've only done it the right way once. And I just don't want to see people do it the wrong way over and over again, like I did. I want to see you guys do it the right way. So whatever your resolution is, I wish you the best of luck. And make it a lifestyle change, not a temporary solution. All right, you guys, and that's pretty much it. Let's see. Is this another short episode? How long do we do here? Uh, a little over. A little over um, uh, 36 right now, plus the intro. We're at like almost 40, but whatever. Maybe you guys are on your way back from your holiday trip. Maybe not. Whenever you're listening to this, I wish you a, a, uh, a happy holidays I know Christmas is over and you're out there. It's time to get back to work. But listen, it's all, you always keep a, a place of cheer in your heart of uh, holiday spirit and giving and thankfulness and creating memories and loved ones and family and friends. Um, always keep it with you all year, wrong, all year long, whatever thing you like, holiday music, you know, movies, nostalgia, spending time with family. Just, you know, enjoy it. Enjoy it. But get back to work at the same time. Come on, you guys. Lifestyle change up in this. I'm excited. I'm starting my new year off great. New Year's Day, I fly out to um, Vancouver, Canada. The show's not till the second, but I I fly out the day before. I get to the condo before Jimmy Schubert does, so I have a day to like kind of explore around in Vancouver and uh, and settle into the condo there and get some groceries, get a good night's sleep, and, and maybe do a little writing, maybe uh, work out, and just uh, get ready for the show on the second. So what a great way. To prepare for the new year. Do I have New Year's resolutions? I definitely have goals. That I want to hit this year. I definitely know that I'm slacking in certain areas. That I want to stop slacking in. So I'm going to come up with a game plan. Of how to start improving it. One thing is. uh, It's not a resolution. It's a goal. So I'm going to start making a plan of how I'm going to get it. And that one thing is uh, I want this podcast numbers to increase. Um, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I've seen it decrease a little bit recently. And uh, I'm a little upset about it. So that's one thing I want to work on. It must be because I'm doing something wrong. Uh, I stopped doing shout outs. Maybe I'm going to start doing shout outs again. And um, amongst other things, maybe just, uh, you know, I don't know. Be more consistent. I might consider going back down to only one episode a week. Maybe maybe I'm overstaying my welcome. I'm not sure. Um, maybe I need to uh, have a more structured formula. But anyway, um, when Kevin Lyons comes back from his holiday family vacation, I'm going to maybe sit with him and come up with uh, see some suggestions that he has, and we'll come up with a game plan. <clears throat> also, another goal is the the YouTube I want to pump up, you know, we're not really consistent with releasing the videos, even though we are doing video podcasts now and every episode, it's just the turnaround time to, you know, it's just hard to edit and then get them out on YouTube. So they're, they're, it's really slacking there. Therefore the YouTube numbers are extremely low. It's almost like I have no YouTube presence. So that's something that we really need to like put a lot of energy into uh, punching that up this year. So see, it's not resolutions as much as it's goals and i'm thinking of how to uh, get improve them and try exercising them and then um another goal of mine is to really try to do more acting this year so i'm gonna start doing and more writing i always used to write stories and i've started doing that again and i really enjoy it i may or may not share some soon on like on like my facebook or instagram or twitter short stories which um I'm now kind of converting them into scripts so I can film a few shorts and uh, get some acting experience. Maybe even I'll, I'll push a little harder with getting uh, you know, an agent to send me out on auditions. And obviously always writing and getting on stage as much as possible. These are my, these are my goals. If you want to call them resolutions, I just have my uh, game plan for them and my training for it. 
And uh, I wish you guys luck on your journey and on your changes that you're going to make and that you want to make with your life. And I hope that you get what you want. And along the way, what you want might change. But you don't figure those out until you start doing it and start doing the game plan and start doing the training for it. Like me, along the way, I found out that while I was taking those breaks, I didn't really want meat at all anymore. And now it's been eight months. I don't even crave it. So, um, <clears throat> that's it. That's it, everybody. I, I I wish you a happy new year. I got a couple episodes this, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, got a couple episodes, I think, before the new year's that I'm recording. I don't know if they'll all be out because I'm kind of recording a couple in a day. So I make sure I have some to release when I'm traveling for the shows. Um, but I have uh, a couple of good guests. We'll see if I have room in my luggage. I'll bring my recording equipment, and maybe, maybe me and Schubert will do an episode there. But mostly, I'm trying to record them before I leave, so I have stuff to release to you, so I don't miss any. And uh, that's it, you guys. Happy New Year! If I don't hear hear from you then, until then, so Happy New Year, to you guys. Good luck. Be safe. Most importantly, be safe and protect your, yourself and your loved ones. And that's it, people. Let's get ready with our outro music. Don't forget, January 2nd through January 5th, I'm in Vancouver, Canada. Go to homeschooledpod.com. Click on tour. The link for all the shows while I'm, I'm in Vancouver are there. The Thursday through the Sunday shows. Friday and Saturday have two shows, early and late. So they're all on there, homeschooledpod.com. Click on tour. Click on the show you want to go. Get your tickets. I would really appreciate it. Also, I really appreciate you guys going to homeschoolpod.com, clicking on merch, and buying a t-shirt or a sticker or something. I really appreciate the support, and I want to see my homeschool podcast uh, audience grow more and more. I'm not trying to make money off it. I just want to get my name out there. Uh, I want to get the support. I want to get um, the recognition. I want to get that good feeling that I know that people are enjoying the work I'm doing and the encouragement to keep going and to keep giving you guys better content. And when I see you guys buying shirts and stuff um, and just posting it and tagging me in it, it just makes me feel really good. It makes me feel like, well, you know, if the numbers are not as high as I want them to be, but at least the people are listening like us and are enjoying it. So um, that makes me feel really good. Uh, So I don't want to make no money. I just want you guys to get the Get the merch, okay? So homeschooledpod.com. Click on merch. I'm going to give you guys 50% off right now through January 1st. At the checkout, use promo code NYD for New Year's Day. Get 50% off. All right, you guys, that's it. Enjoy a little more holiday music while you still can. I'm Augustino Zoyda. This is the Homeschool Podcast. I'll see you next time, guys.